In this video, I begin a restoration project on my 21-year-old Kyosho Alpha Laser. Here she is. Hang on. Seems to be something missing here. Good news, guys. I managed to find the rest of the car. And as you can see, the rear end has been completely pulled apart and ready for some overhauling. The rear shocks are in a pretty bad way. I'm going to completely rebuild those. The rear end needs cleaning and <clears throat> polishing up of all the plastic parts. And while I have got the rear end off the car I have actually decided to remove the original motor this is the original 540 motor that came in the car when I bought it in 1999 so it's over 20 years old now I'm going to put I can grab that here without too much problem. I'm going to put a Core RC 21 turn silver can motor in it. So be interesting to see how that goes. That should be alright and look forward to having that in. Pretty cool looking motor, but um there's the details of all, but if any of you want to do a similar type of thing. Okay, so I've got the gear, rear gear box and diff assembly ready to be pulled apart to see if I can work out where the grinding noises and stuff like that's coming from. So um, we will cut into the workbench now and see what's going on inside the rear gearbox. Alright guys, I have completely disassembled the diff and cleaned up all the parts, soaked the metal bits in degreaser for overnight and stuff like that and cleaned up all the plastic parts and I have found nothing wrong with it any of it actually, all the gears are completely intact and undamaged, not sure whether you can see that or not, but yeah, there we go, all the gears are completely undamaged, uh, all the bearings are completely fine, um, the housing, the diff housing is all good, um, and there are no issues with the sprockets for the drive belt. Um, what I did find, however, that when I ran the Alpha Laser for the first time in a while, 17 years actually, <laughs> the first time the other week, and the pinion gear came loose, but then I fix that and got it running again but something happened again and it was making a really weird really grinding noise and I and spinning and I just assumed that the pinion gear had come loose again and we stopped filming and that was the end of it but it turns out that having a close look at the spur gear once I'd pulled everything apart this spur gear is completely rogered I'm not sure whether you can see that, but there are bird over bits and there are flat bits. And so the spur gear is done. That is probably what was causing most of the grinding noise because there's nothing wrong with the diff at all. Thankfully, I made a deal with a guy in Belgium who had a spare alpha laser and 
he basically has sent me all the plastic parts. I'm still waiting for those, and one of the plastic parts happens to be a new spur gear. Um, so all I need to do now is just wait for that stuff to arrive from Belgium. It was sent a couple of weeks ago now, so I don't know how long that is going to take to arrive. So my refurbishment of the Alpha Laser is probably going to be reliant on how long it takes for the new spur gear to arrive. But that said, what I am now going to do, guys, is put some diff in this screw. I'll try that again. <laughs> put some grease in this diff and actually see if I can um, get it back together again and see what it's like with grease in it again. And um, But I think it'll be fine, actually. I don't think there was an issue with the diff in the end. I think it was spur gear. So I'm going to put this dip back together off camera because I like to fiddle around and do things slow. My fingers don't always work the best and don't want you don't want to be seeing me fumbling about for a half an hour trying to get the dip back together. So I'll do that off camera and then I'll come back and let you know how I got on and what it what it is like with all the new grease in it and stuff like that so i will catch you guys in a minute all right guys i put the diff assembly back together um and it seems to be running nicely again so hopefully that has sorted the issue of it if there was any grinding within that diff, hopefully that has sorted it. But I do think it was probably this screwed up spur gear. But, okay, so now it's time to install this back into the gearbox and get the gearbox back together. So, be back in a flash. Alright guys, we're back again. The gearbox is now fully assembled and everything is running sweetly. It's looking good. So hopefully all will be good. It's nice and clean again. I just now need to reinstall it to the main drive belt on the actual car and then put that cover on. That's where the spur gear sits. And the spur gear needs to be changed. So that will be left for now. But So next up, this will be going back in the car. So see you in a bit. Alright guys, new motor is mounted and it looks awesome. If the performance is anywhere near what the... Oh, that's a um, bit of a, don't want that there. All right, the performance is anywhere near as good as what it looks. We're going to be in business. So what I've also decided to do is I am changing the pinion gear. This is the one from the original motor, and I've left it on it. That is, I think either 23 or 25 tooth can't quite remember and it's not actually in not actually listed in the instruction manual it just gives a part number it doesn't actually say what what it is i'm sure there are ways of finding out and i will in the future but for now i don't know but i put a slightly larger pinion gear on i don't know if you can see that but and it's a Brand new one that I had laying around for years and years that never got used. It'd be two teeth more. So if that original one was 23, this would be 25. If it was 25, this would be 27. So just a little bit more high-end speed, hopefully. But that is now sorted. So it's now time 
to put this on the gearbox and put the gearbox in the car. Catch you in a bit. Alright guys, I have now given the chassis a clean and spruce up. It's looking pretty good. Nice and shiny and all ready for some stuff to be reinstalled. First up, I'm going to, as you know, put the rear dip in and the rear stuff. All that's been cleaned and I've been through now re rebuilding this. So this is all rebuilt and the new motor is on the motor mount ready to go. So all that is all good to go. So one little thing that... and. Most of you guys might already know this, but I didn't when I when I first started back again. And I saw a little bit of a tip on um, a channel um, by Ryan Harris. It's basically mostly to do with um, pro racing, which is really interesting in and of itself. But he cleaned his plastic parts with a with with this stuff well, well a variant of this stuff an American version uh silicon spray um and I've and to keep it keep the plastic rejuvenated and looking good I started using it with my alpha laser parts I've done it on the on the diff cover the rear diff covers and I've now added it to this and it does it actually really brings the plastic back up and makes it look really good so uh this one was got from super cheap auto in Australia but whichever country you're from you'll find the country variant of it I'm sure so not much point leaving a link down in the description because you'd need to be from Australia to get this one but something like this but if you want to rejuvenate your plastic parts that is a great way to go but anyway quit with the waffling and it's time to start wrenching on this thing and getting some things reinstalled so we can get closer and closer to getting it back out on the dirt again really looking forward to that so be back in a few minutes with this guy installed. Let's go. Alright guys, success. We gearbox is mounted with the new motor also mounted. Looking definitely looking the business. I really like the look of this new motor in the car it looks great now i was planning on just continuing with the rear end and putting the swing arms on and getting the shocks ready but i had what was almost a disaster a few minutes ago this gear here that attaches to the drive belt with in the gearbox itself actually slipped out and slipped off the drive belt so it almost led to me having to pull the whole thing back apart again and put this gear back onto the drive belt thankfully though I was able to manipulate it and slip it back on and it does work so it's fine but because of that I've changed my plans I'm actually going to clean up and work on the front gearbox which is off but still dirty and attach and then put it back on and attach the belt and put the, the that has a cover go over it to prevent it obviously from coming out like it just did um i want to get that on as soon as possible because guys getting 
having to pull all this apart again would just be, if you had to, you do it, but I would really rather not because my wonky hand it takes me a little bit of work to get this stuff back together and I had a bit of an effort getting some of these lined up while holding the chassis and holding the gearbox and but I got it sorted but it was a little bit was a little bit tricky for me. A bit trickier than I think when it when it was when I first built it. 20 odd years ago when I was like 27, 28, something like that anyway, but um, so let's see if I can, I shall this here, I don't know whether you can see it very well, but this is a front gear box with the drive belt and the drive belt is actually in really good nick considering it's 20 years old. I do have a spare one but I'm not sure whether I will even bother replacing it because there's really nothing wrong with it and I'll keep the other one as spare. But So plan is pull this apart, get it all cleaned up, maybe re- Regrease the, the front diff as well like I did the back one. May as well considering it's all apart. And then just reattach the drivetrain and seal that up. Make sure that thing's not going to come back out again. And then we'll start adding all the extra gubbins onto it. But So next up is pulling this apart, giving it a clean and going from there. So, next stop, pull this guy apart. Alright guys, front gearbox is disassembled and one thing that did surprise me is the two halves of the gearbox are actually only held together with two screws. I've forgotten about that. Just two screws up the top here. One, two, and they actually also hold the shock tower on as well, but I'd totally forgotten that there are actually pretty much only two screws holding. Obviously, there's others on the bottom where it attaches to the chassis, but holding the actual diff cover together, yeah, two screws. So, and it is pretty dirty, so I'm glad that I've pulled it apart. And this particular, the front bit of this diff cover is going to need to be replaced because I'll take a photo of it and put that up now. As you can see, the two screws are basically, the two holes I should say for the screws are basically totally rogered because this those are the two holes where the front bumper attaches to. And in its racing days, the front bumper actually just the screws pulled out, the original screws pulled out. And to reattach the front bumper, I had to use larger self-tappers to re-bite back into the plastic again. So it's made the holes a lot bigger and I don't want to put bigger ones back in. I want to put originals in. So that parts box that I am waiting for from Belgium will include one of these. So I'll nab the, the front portion of the dip cover from that. That way I can use the original screws again to hold the front bumper on. So, all right, guys. Next up is um, pull this guy apart and soak all the metal stuff in the greaser and we will go from there. And the reason why I'm not doing all of this on camera wrenching as we talk, <laughs> it is really challenging at the best of times with my hands to get it going right and 
I just really don't want to be embarrassing myself with it. Oh, I just noticed that there is a washer missing between that drive cup and the um the bearing. That's interesting. I think what happened is a while back that drive cup actually fell out and because the grub screw got lost. So obviously that washer dropped out when the drive cup came out. But anyway, I'm just babbling now, so sorry about that. So I'll get this apart and get it soaking and I'll be back. All right, guys, I just pulled apart the front gearbox and all the gears seem to be in good working order. But surprisingly, back in the day when I first put this together, I used very little grease. I'm surprised actually because I thought I might have at times over greased some of these things. But no, I hardly put any in. So I will pull this apart and soak it. But all the gears are looking good, which is really good news. So, we are getting there, guys. Next step, pulling this apart and soakage. So, this guy here should come off quite well. Here we go. My hands can do these little bits. <laughs> but, um, certain other bits, not quite. Oop. There we go. Those are now off. As you can, now you know what I mean by wonkiness. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that was relatively painless. So, everything's out, ready for soaking. Alright guys. I'll probably end it about there. I think I was planning on doing something a little bit more with those, with the front gearbox and getting the front diff finished, but the parts box for the Alpha Laser turned up and it's changed my plan slightly with what's in it and stuff like that. Not as much as what I thought was going to be in it is in it, unfortunately. Still really good and stuff, but, um, so what I'll do is I'll wrap this video up here and start another video very soon with what came in that box and what my plans are going to be, and then we'll go ahead and fix up that front dip and get into all that good juicy stuff, but We'll do that next time, guys, so this video has probably gotten way too long, so apologies for that if it has. Just remember, if you're new to the channel, please consider liking and subscribing and smashing that bell. It really helps me out a lot. I'd love to grow the channel and do more stuff and be just more generally involved with the RC community. I'm loving this so far, so... Like and subscribe if you want to be a part of it and smash the bell so you don't miss any more of my future stuff because hopefully I'm planning on bringing out quite a bit of stuff over the next few months. I've got some really good ideas so we'll just have to see how it comes along but until next time guys, take care and happy RCing and keep on gripping and ripping and Matt, RC Chronicles, signing off again. See you guys.